this piece is on a uh, paper by Fabergino or Fabriano. You listen to me. It's uh, Fabriano's um, their studio line. So now this paper actually um, it has uh, I think 25% cotton in it. So that intrigued me. I had done the um, uh, watercolor live and they had a little presentation on the different papers and I found that invaluable because um, they went through how things are made, what's, what's the difference, and here again in the papers. Um, I just wanted to show you because one of our samples is on this paper. Now this is uh, just your, your paper that you find at, at uh, Ocean State Job Lot or, or you know, whatever. This $1.99. So what drives me nuts about these papers is that they don't, they never say it's just 100% um, cellulose. It, they say nothing. They tell you it's acid free. That's good. It's 140 pounds, which that's the weight of uh, a decent watercolor paper. There's really nothing wrong with this paper. It's just that it's it's cellulose. It's paper. It's like a thin piece of cardboard. So it doesn't have the same characteristics that you're going to find when you move up to um, a watercolor paper like this which is 100% um, cotton. And as somebody just recently said to me, you know, it's 100% cotton. It, it's kind of a piece of fabric, basically. And you don't really think about it that way. There's a sizing in there. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with um, a really good grade of watercolor. You can, a lot of people think, oh, it's so delicate, but you can uh, go back in there and scrub uh, to, well, until your paper gives out. But in the meantime, when we're first learning, it's good to, um, you know, try the different papers. Now, this is Strathmore. Um, both of them, you see, they both say watercolor. The difference is, um, and they, they're also saying, now this is their 400 series. I believe this one was 402. But um, this is in a pad, and... Uh, they're t giving you a description, rough surface. Um, this is 130 pounds, so this is a little bit lighter than the standard paper, but it's it's still of good quality. Um, and you see, I, I kind of cross this off. This would be something that I might take out on a plain air and just paint in four little sections and, and do four sketches instead of... Uh, separating the paper and kind of keeps it nice and together but um these are decent when i am working on a, a big piece where i know i'm going to have a lot of hours to it i i am always on a um the 100 percent rag but for certain things when i'm testing colors sometimes or just kind of playing with different things i will um use up all these now the uh as i said there were two strap Strathmore, this is the uh, block. And what that means um, is that these, this is all still fused together on all the sides. Here I apparently began to lift up a piece of paper. So when you go out in the field, it's kind of nice because it's all solid and, and you've got, uh, you can finish one thing, you can peel that piece off and go on to the other uh, painting. Another thing too, if you are really not loving what it, you're doing, you always have a different side. If it is 100% um, cotton, uh, a real watercolor paper, you can also kind of scrub the whole thing up. You're not going to get too far. You're going to have a pile of paper mache for your next project if you try that with this. But you know, maybe maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe you you paint something on here and you turn it into um, the decoupage and things like that. So you, then you could soak that and then um, apply your, your beautiful paintings on something else. So play with the different papers. Um, right now, 
this I'm checking to see it has 25% cotton. I wanted to see what could I do with this. Can I? Right now I have seen that I can do the uh, frisket fine. It releases good. Um, we're going to try our sketch here and we're going to use this um, the paper from Ocean State Job Lab. All right, because you will see the paint sometimes will go on differently and and it might not absorb the way you, you think it should, um, and you're a little frustrated with that. And other times you think, oh, isn't that great? I love those little patterns and things that go into it. Um, these uh, papers here will have, like on this side, because this is the side with the roller, they have a little bit of a pattern to it, but when you flip it over, it's, it's really smooth. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because um, in watercolor paper, it comes rough, cold press, and hot press. Hot press, it means it went through two hot rollers, and they squished it down, and it's very um, a hard surface, basically. And your paint goes on there differently. It's kind of almost like the Yupo papers and the um, alcohol inks. And so you'll, you'll get a, a different sense of your painting when you, you're on that firmer paper. Cold press, now this is a manufactured paper, so they just are rolling a pattern into that paper to kind of give you that canvasy or, or rough surface. Um, in the other papers, it's most people will use what's called cold press 140, and that's a, it's a good paper. It's I just had the arches, um, and it's a standard weight paper. Uh, you can go up to, this is a, there again, another block where all those sides are sealed. And so I've, I've actually got this many sheets of paper here. When I'm done, I'm gonna take my little X-Acto razor blade and go in between those two uh, or underneath that first sheet and I'll just slide it around and then I keep coming around. But this way, when I use a block, the reason for the block is I don't have to stretch the paper. And that's another big thing with the watercolor paper. You think, oh, I have to stretch it. How do I learn how to do that? This 140 paper, something like this. As you can see, I've already had this. It's already wet. I've got a little bit of a curl going on there from what the paper would have been just coming off of this um, piece. So, um, and then as I see this and, and uh, it snaps off good. Another thing some people will do is they'll buy these blocks like this and you clamp it all together. You use your own Elmer's glue or some kind of glue that you know is going to seal and you can create your own block that way. You, you just need that tight stack and so people have done that too so if you have a um, I have a little plain air box that uh, that's why I bought this 8 by 10 that's basically what it holds so um, I bought that because of a lot of people don't carry that particular size and I was about to make my own so another reason we bought this one the little books or boxes that you can get um, uh, journals. There they are. They're hiding. Also, when you're looking for different papers and things to um, get yourself going and, and get yourself um, inspired, there are a lot of different kinds of cards. There again, I'm testing my these out for myself. I wanted to see what is the quality uh, um, of the watercolor card as opposed to the mixed media card. And then this is also a Strathmore product and it's called Creative Cards. Now, there again, the papers are all different. But this is a, a great box because there's 100 pieces that you can turn them into your next creation and mail them off to your friends and... Um, it, it is different than watercolor paper, though. You'll find, now this, um, it doesn't take a lot of water. It'll tend to curl up on you, so it's not a bad thing. I just shove it in the envelope and 
let it flatten as it mails to the person, but it's a good way to practice and to get yourself out and just kind of play with things because, you know, the whole box cost under $20. Um, you've got an envelope, you're ready to go. Mixed media card, there again, um, doesn't take the watercolor as well. It, it's the saturation. So as long as you don't work like where you need to wet the whole paper and let everything blossom, that you're probably fine that these are fine. And so both of these, I put that on that, that level. This is the watercolor paper and it is a, a nice thick paper. Um, but I haven't really worked on it enough to say, oh yeah, I, this is what I'm gonna keep buying. Because for all I know, I might just wanna say, well, I can buy this pad here and I can make my own card and, and things. So I just, you know, as a comparison or a, a quick, you know, they already put the envelope with everything else. It's something fun to, to try. Um, I do tend to write down my prices so I can say, well, what, what did I pay for that anyway? So these are all good things. Um, I just, I'm kind of wanting you to realize that sometimes if you try something and you get a little frustrated because it, it's not working the same way you, it did on something else, it might be the surface that you're working on, but the surfaces can be so much fun to explore because you can do so many different things. This is um, also a re recent purchase. These are um, watercolor books. So this is all very tiny. Um, and I figured that if I'm sitting somewhere and I don't want to do something too huge, I could have just this and I could take this little box with me or even one of these trays and one paintbrush. And I need a spritzer bottle. I have a tiny one. So I take my tiny one, but I can go out and just, this would be my plain air, put it in your purse, go, stop, paint, do whatever you want. The only thing is once you get your tray wet, you got to walk around like this until it dries or, you know, get yourself in a little bag. If, if the colors do kind of blend together, it's not that big of a deal. Um, some, uh, somebody I know, she like scooped everything out. And you don't really have to. What what you can do is just like if I had gotten some red into this yellow, I could actually kind of dissolve that layer, let them dry, um, and then dissolve that, that layer. Otherwise, sometimes if it's already a lost cause, I'll just mix it in there, go put the true color in a different spot, and just, then I got a pre-mixed color. I'm good. So... There again, these are all journals of different sizes and um, a good way to think, hey, maybe I should take that on my next trip. And when we're sitting at Yellowstone, I'll draw something. And I, I'm gonna see what this looks like on another watercolor board paper also. We'll do kind of the, the same, um, treatment because we want to see what are these papers going to do. Now this is the Strathmore. As I said, it's a decent paper. There's no, uh, nothing to sneeze at. So when you get into the store and you're looking at this block, I think at this point, um, this size, it might be a $65 block. So that's why it's like, you know, you don't want to use that just willy-nilly. This you're probably going to be able to get for less than 30 or 20 or something like that and it's gonna do fine. Um, it's the different quality papers definitely um, will cost more. Um, also another uh, Fabriano is another uh, nice paper. Uh, Joe's down where I got the, um, uh, th this brush, they've got their Kilimanjaro and there, that's a reasonably, uh, priced paper. And it's also very good. It's, um, and they also have in a bright, bright white. Some of the companies use a little bit more bleaches and we'll get the, 
uh, papers to read a lot brighter than, you know, it'll be more like that. Well, I guess those are pretty close to each other. Anyway, um, but see, this paper looks so much grayer to this. And sometimes that is becomes a factor of what you're, you're looking at. So right now we're going to see what is the difference between if I'm going to do like a bleed um, and put in a, a sky on my paper, um, what, what is the difference going to be between the Strathmore and the 25% Fabriano Studio Strathmore? <laughs> I tend to write and tell myself what I'm um, working on. So, because I'll work on something one day and, and then I come back to it and I'm like, what was I working, doing there? Mm -hmm. 